Hey everybody, how's everybody doing tonight? As promised, we're going to do a uh, Indian curry tonight, and I'm going to do it as close to from scratch as possible. Um, now, again, I think I've got all the ingredients and not 100% sure, but, you know, we're going to wing it if we don't, but I think we're good. Uh, we're going to do some uh, basmati rice along with the curry, so we got a traditional Indian uh, dish here. Oops, that's not going to work. Uh, that's the lid for the steamer portion. Alright, so this and then this. And I have just a few items left to set out. As you can see, I've been doing my prep um, to get us as close to being ready as possible. So, these are our ingredients. And I'm going to pull out my other camera here in just a second. And we're going to take a look. I am going to put a hat on so that I don't get hair in my food guys um, even at home I like to wear them when I'm cooking if I can remember so here we go let's see we're going to turn this camera on and I'm enjoying learning how to do this with multiple cameras um, this has been very interesting Alrighty, as you can see, I've got all my ingredients laid out, including my kids' homework. <laughs> um, I always have that stuck off onto the corner there, just so, you know, I don't want to ever forget it, because this is here most of the time in this spot. Um, we got yogurt, we got tomato sauce, we got water, tomatoes, lemon, for lemon juice, Onion, potatoes, salt, um, gin, or not ginger, but uh, garlic. I think I still need ginger. I'm pretty sure I do. Black pepper. I got more black pepper to add the crush to it to make it a little bit more potent. Uh, chili powder, cumin, cumin seed, crush or ground cumin, uh, turmeric, uh, ground coriander paprika and the um, yeah the gr grenier yeah I can't pronounce it it's masala uh, anyways uh, these are our ingredients we're gonna have the curry going over here we're gonna have the rice going over here and then I will slice up some bread to go along with it um, if you guys remember the last time I did curry, we did a Thai chicken, a Thai curry chicken, and this is kind of what it come out looking. Um, this is left, what was left of it. And we're going to be throwing that away. It's been sitting there too long. I just haven't gotten around to throwing it away. It still smells good. <laughs> doesn't have a bad, doesn't have a bad odor. Okay, guys. Oops. You okay? Okay. If you're gonna if you're gonna watch, you have to stay about where Madeline's at so you don't get hurt, okay? And I have my own little spectator today. She's wanting to watch me cook, so she's gonna get her she's gonna get her opportunity here. Um, I did want to check. I do believe that ground ginger was, or fresh ginger was in this list here. I, yep, fresh minced ginger. That was the last ingredient I forgot. And it's not that I forgot it. I actually have it. <laughs> there is my ginger. Okay, now I've got all my ingredients. We're going to start prepping the ingredients. It says, in a large bowl, toss chicken pieces with lemon juice, salt, 
pepper to coat set aside. Okay, so that means we're going to prep our chicken first, which means we got a good clean cutting board. We're going to have to clean it when we're done. So, let's get our chicken going first here. Uh, use a boning knife. This is called a boning knife, guys. Whenever you're working with chicken or any kind of knife, you want to make sure you got a good grip. Um, I use an ergonomic with a um, with a germ resistant or bacteria bacteria resistant handles. Um, I buy these at a kitchen the kitchen store. Uh, sharpen them always first. Because let's admit it, a sharp knife is absolutely safer than a dull knife. A dull knife tears, a sharp knife cuts. If you go into the hospital and you ask the doctor which is going to which is going to do more damage, a knife that's dull or a knife that's sharp, the doctor's going to tell you the knife is dull. Turn that light back on and leave it on while I'm filming, please, or you're not going to be able to sit there, okay? you got to leave things alone. Daddy has everything set up the way he wants. John, that includes you too, buddy. What do you want? Okay, then you can grab a chair and pull it over there next to your sister and sit and watch, or you can go watch TV, or you can continue to play on the computer. Your choice, but I want you out of my... Okay, go for it. Bye. Enjoy. So we'll open up the package of chicken. This came with three pieces of thin cut breasts. These are fillets of breasts. Throw our chicken package away. Uh, I don't like uh, yucky yucky chicken. It's not yucky guys. It's actually really good. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut and, trim, cut and trim these into cubes. Uh, what we're looking for is any major fat or tendons. We don't want to leave on there. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of cut this into bite-sized pieces that will cook evenly. Okay, so we got pieces and about that size. Yeah, that's about a one-inch cube bite size. We're not looking for something that's too big to handle here, but we want them fairly even so that they cook evenly. So. And you see how quickly the knife makes do of the chicken and how easily this knife could go through bone. I'm barely even holding on to it. It's just you let the knife do the work. Let it drag. There you go. And then we're going to do this and we're going to repeat over and over again until we've got um, all the chicken cut up and trimmed the way we want it. In this case, I'm not really doing a whole lot of trimming these. We're fairly well trimmed already so we're going to kind of just judge and guess oops there we go so yeah try to keep everything relatively close to the same size so everything starts cooking evenly. What are you doing, my little honey? You're over there doing all sorts of weird things in that chair. Alright, looks good. This might have a tiny bit of tendon in it, but we're going to cross our fingers that it's not. We'll find out. The, the knife will catch on the tendon pieces. Um, I mean, just barely. You, you got to know what you're doing with the knife to realize what you're hitting. But it does register when you come across it as tendon. Yeah, there's a piece of tendon right there. But it's not too bad. I think we can do it. We can work around it. Yeah, it's that one right there. Red spots in the ch in the meat indicate that there is a broken blood vessel that leaked out into the meat. Not really too big a deal. Generally the reason I don't like buying my meat this way, I like doing it myself. It's that way if anyone breaks a bone with me. <laughs> um, okay, so 
We got that. I need to wash my hands real quick. Always keep a little bit of soap on hand. That way you can wash your hands really quick on the go. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to wash them again here in a second. Why do I wash my hands just to go pick, handle chicken again? Well, because i got to get a bowl out and let that chicken soak in a bowl with the lemon and the salt and pepper. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get a bowl out and I don't want to dirty my other dishes or cross-contaminate my other dishes. So... That's what I did. All right, on the edge of the cutting board that has not been touched by chicken, we put our bowl, put our chicken in the bowl, got rings, we're going to set this bowl to the side for just a second, grab our cutting board, everything to do with our cutting board, into the sink, quick wash, soap, water, hot water. Good washing makes all the sense in the world, keeps from cross contaminating. Dry our cutting board off as best we can for the moment. It'll be okay because we really don't need to have it perfectly clean. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave that knife sit there because I don't need it at the moment. And however, when we come in here where I left my other knife, we need this one. Now for our teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. I personally like fresh lemon. There's something about it coming squeezed straight from the lemon itself that makes it just a bomb. So we take and we press and roll that on that lemon. I'm going to move this over a bit so you all can see what I'm doing here uh, from more than one angle, maybe, depending on how I edit it. Um, <laughs> so by putting pressure and rolling on it, you'll feel it start. It's like massaging a muscle. You're breaking up the fibers and releasing the juice. And as long as you don't press too hard, You'll just keep massaging that lemon and, and breaking free that juice and it gets nice and squishy. And then when you cut into it, oh, not a sharp knife. What do we do? Not sharp knives. Sharpen the knife for every use. Pushing this into the lemon and squeezing the lemon against it 
and kind of just reaming the inside of the lemon with the reamer. You'll see it. That's what it looks like when it's done. See? And then I rinse my hands because I have a cuticle so that got a little opened the other day. Okay, so it said that along with salt and pepper to taste. Now, I happen to like the taste of cracked black pepper, but what I would normally do is I would pour some out onto my cutting board. Using the flat side of my knife, I would come along and I would crush them. And that's how you get cracked black pepper. I happen to have some, so this will work perfectly. We're going to take this, and we're going to put some cracked black pepper in there. We're going to add the rest of this cracked black pepper to this bowl to mix it with the ground black pepper. And then we'll use it to season. This gives more of a peppery flavor. This is more for flavor than it is. This is not for heat, guys. This has nothing to do with heat. This is black pepper. If you do it right, no heat. Now, my, my, my salt, you'll notice, has a little bit of pink in it. Um, that's Himalayan sea salt. Don't worry about that. I use a little bit of that. It's really not a huge difference in flavor, but it does add a little slight difference in flavor. May I play on so, my tab? Yes. Uh, in just a few minutes. Let Daddy finish what he's doing. Okay, so we got to blend it. We need a little bit more black pepper. And a tiny bit more salt. Just to make sure that it gets all gets coated evenly. Oh, I have to wash my hand and my cutting board again. Okay, and then it says to set aside. So set it aside. We're done with that for now. Let's wash our cutting board one more time. Okay. So, when we get done, I'm going to actually use my other camera here a little bit. Uh, I know I just, <laughs> I just took a shut it off and all of that. It's fun working with so many different devices. Okay, and I'm going to get a good close-up of what that's supposed to look like. You can see there's pepper and it has kind of a lemony smell. And you can see the protein starting get out of the light you can see it's starting to turn white that's because the acid in the lemon juice starts to actually change the protein of the, the structure of the protein which makes it almost give it a cooked look okay so our next step let's see what our next step says to do okay so the next thing we're going to do, we got a couple of things we actually need to do. First, we're going to get some water going. Um, this is going to allow us to uh, peel and de seed the tomatoes so that we can cut them up. We want enough water to cover the tomatoes. Um, just needs to be hot water. It can be salt water, but don't really need to be. What we do with the tomatoes to get them ready. First, I'm going to cut out the area where the stem was at. These tomatoes are getting right close to the end. They're starting to wrinkle a bit on the surface, so they're still good and solid and, and everything inside, it's just they're, they're right at the end of their, they're at the end of their, their uh, lifespan. So then we just take, we make a real quick slit right here, a little slit the opposite direction right there, and just, that's it.
Alright, onion is next. Um, your onion. Cut the top off and we, we like that little peel there. And we're going to give a little slit there, a little slit there, another little slit there. We're going to come over here we're going to start to peel our onion. One. And everywhere I put a little slit it's going to create a new tear in the skin and it gives me a new leaf to work with. Now obviously this onion has a bad spot here. It's another two layers down so what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in here and we're going to go one and kind of just cut into the next layer. There we go. And we'll start peeling that next layer. And we'll use our finger because this layer is a little bit thicker. And I think that's the only layer we're going to have to go through. You can use the back side of the blade to push through and pull. It, it works just as well. Don't cut through that yet. The minute you cut through that, you start getting teary-eyed and yuck yuck. At this point, then you're going to very carefully come out here and just cut the roots off. You don't want to cut the whole stump off. There we go. Onions peeled and ready to go. <clears throat> Two more pops of bags. <laughs> Alright, water's heating. Um, potatoes peeled. May as well get everything done while we're thinking about it. Potato. Trying something different, something that Daddy likes that I think you'll like. Okay, we will cut the onion. Onion first, half the onion. The recipe calls the whole thing. Fine dice, it says.
can, you know, tomatoes. Slide the spoon. Slide the spoon. Tomato. In. Tomato. In. Tomato. In. the onions along with uh, okay this is the medium heat stir in cumin seed and cook one minute so cumin seed I need one teaspoon of cumin seed this Teaspoon of cumin seed. And I've been doing this long enough that I do recognize my the sizes of um, I can kind of eyeball measurements. Part of cooking is not always being exact. Um, that allows you the liberty of changing the taste to your liking. If you're always exact, you're always going to be the same way somebody else has always done it. And you never put your own personal spin on it. Uh, this allows you to put your own personal spin on it. So we got our cumin seed toasting. We're going to get the... Go ahead and use the spoon here to kind of just give them a little... Oh, they're smelling good. Give them a little bit of a spread around so they've they got good toasting going. Starting to smell them really well. Tomatoes are out. They're, they're ready. See how the skin split? We could peel them very easily like that. That's why we made that little cut. Very quick peel. These cooked that actually cooked just a little bit too long because too much of the meat's coming off of the skin there. I'm not real happy with the way that turned out. Alright, so the cumin's very nice and toasty smelling. Onion. And we want to cook the onion down until it's a dark caramelized. Caramelized nice and dark. Oh, I'm getting some good smells up in here. So we're going to blend those seeds in with the onions so that they cook a little bit more evenly and don't continue to toast and burn on the bottom. Um, definitely going to add a tiny bit more oil. this out of here. Get that oil spread around a little bit first. Okay. There's my spoon holder. Whoops. Put the spoon there. There's a 
caps in my pepper oil. Tomatoes are next on my list of things to do. So, slice them. <laughs> Pretty, huh? You get practice, you get that good one. You got really good sharp knives, you can do that. And we're just dicing them. See, that's it. All it is is a simple dice. Very simple to do, very easy to do. Um, the canned tomatoes I have would have been too much, really. It would have been. Uh, peel off our skin, peel off our skin. Now, these have not been de-seeded here, so we're going to cut them in half this way. So it seeds up and up like a, ball, a bowl. And as you can see, by blanching the tomatoes, the skin comes off really super easy. And yeah, it is wet, but that's life. That's how it works. There we go. Two balls. The skin's off. We throw the skins away. Skins, we can't digest. Even if you cook them down, you just can't digest them. So, no point in keeping them if you can't digest them. Same thing with the seeds. Seeds pass right through us. And they have no flavor. Their only other benefit is to grow more tomatoes. Daddy, I was using my little tab and camera to record my your own vlog. I'm looking at it. So I'm going to just go so that it's hot. And all I'm doing is under running water, I'm sticking my finger in each of those seed cavities and breaking loose all the seeds so that the Water pushes them down and out and out down the drain. So I end up with empty, empty tomatoes. They have no seeds in them. And then we come along here and we go like this. One, two, good slicing. Doesn't matter. These are all going to get diced. We're going to give this a stir real quick. It's going to get very, very aromatic at this point. We're starting to develop a little bit of caramelization. We want to keep it cooking nice and even. All of this is really smelling good. First time I've ever done this, guys. So I'm trying in order to cut down on time a little. I'm trying to cook and prep all at the same time here. We don't normally do that in the kitchen. Oh, please, if you're going to replay video, take it in the other room. John, if you're going to replay video, take it in the other room because I, I don't need the feedback on my cameras, okay? We need approximately eight ounces of these tomatoes cut up. Normally, you know, the recipe calls for it in the can, but... The can is like 15 ounces, and I don't want to store tomatoes, and these were getting ready to be, these are at the point where they were needing to be used, so we just went ahead and did these. These will be fine. It's all getting cooked down anyways, and it all, this is helps to thicken the sauce, the curry sauce. And that's definitely about eight ounces. Tomatoes! 
look at that. I'm going to record you doing my cam. I'm replaying my recording with my camera this time. The onions are starting to caramelize. They're looking good. Um, This is what our onions are looking like. They're, as you can see, they're starting to caramelize pretty decently. Um, we kind of keep them spread out. They will get darker and darker as they cook, but I'm fogging up the lens of my camera here. Mine. Trying to because tape this. This protects um, my lens from getting all fogged up. Uh, this is how we did our tomatoes is what it looks like when we're all done looks just like it came out of the can just no juice the next thing we're going to do is cut our potatoes into bite-sized pieces like we did the chicken um, the chicken we're going to toss the chicken just a little bit just to make sure that it stays okay and stays coated in that lemon juice um, Yogurt. I think we're going to put the yogurt away for just a minute because it comes in closer towards the end. Um, and just be on the safe side because I don't want the yogurt getting too warm on us. Um, but anyways, uh, onions looking really good. I can actually put my hand on the pot because the pot is not hot. The bottom of the pot's hot. But look at those onions starting to get nice, nice and dark. Now we want them caramelized as if we were doing a French onion soup, guys. We want them nice, nice, nice and hot and dark. Uh, almost a reddish brown color. Um, as far as cooking the basmati rice, I believe it's the same rules as the rest of rice. One cup, two cups, yep. One cup of rice, two cups of... One cup of rice, two cups of, uh, I need to find a container to put this in. But that's going to be in just a few minutes. We want to get this going, because this has to cook the longest. It takes the longest to prepare. We are going to have a late dinner tonight. John, please, out of my way, buddy. I don't want you in the way of the cameras, okay? I am not in the way of my I'm doing about, uh, I'd say about a half inch cut, maybe a three quarter inch cut. Yeah, about a three quarter inch cut. Um, it's fairly nice size, but it's bite size. Keep consistent. Everything should be about the same width. You know, we want decent food. We want something we can bite into, but it will cook evenly. But we do need to come and stir every so often so it doesn't darken too fast on one side and then none on the other. For that, we're going to actually move some stuff around here on the counter so that I can move my iPad that I'm using for directions over to this side. It's going to be a late dinner tonight. Um, onion, garlic, and ginger. So we need to see how much of the ginger and garlic we need. A teaspoon of ginger and 
the, all of this garlic that I put in here. So there's the garlic. And I got a special little size spoon. These are almost true teaspoons here, so I use them for these things. This is about two cloves of garlic right there. I'm going to about a teaspoon of ginger. And put that back in the refrigerator now. It's done. Put our these. Get everything out of your way. Keep very clean if you can. All right. So we're gonna actually lower our heat down, back down to medium a bit because we're starting to get that color. I just don't want to get it burnt. Does it look like tacos? No, it is not tacos. What is this? We're having Indian. We're having an Indian dish. The Indian? Dish? Yes, curry chicken. This is not like the last time. This is Indian, not Thai. The last time we, the last one we had was Thai. Leave that alone now. Okay. Um, okay. So until onion and ginger, cook until onion is tender. Add tomatoes and season with chili powder, turmeric, garam masala, ground cumin, coriander, and paprika. Continue to cook and stir. Okay, so that seems pretty self-explanatory. We got this very nice, get this very nice brown onion color. I'm color for our onion here. I'm gonna get a good picture of it here. Look at that. That is a gorgeous caramelization. That is closest to the cup that's getting really close to the color that we want we could turn it up a little bit we're gonna actually do that bring our heat see now mine is really nice I've got low me medium low medium medium high I'm right halfway between medium and medium high right now that's what I want I want to hear that sizzle I want to hear it cooking I want to hear it keep on cooking because we need that to caramelize the rest of the way. We want a nice dark color. Now this is olive oil, the cumin, or I'm sorry, yeah, the cumin seed um, toasted in the olive oil until it's very aromatic. And then, and you can see there's fond developing on the bottom of the pan. That's that brown stuff right there. Um, that's a good sign. We want that. Um, yeah, it is actually quite interesting cooking with a camera in my hand. Um, so especially when it's getting all steamed up. So anyways, this, this particular burner has the ability that we can actually move it up or down with the plus or minus by 10 degrees at a time. Um, these are all presets down here. We do have a timer uh, program. We can program the timer to do different things. But all that is just looking so good right now. All right. So we got our color, guys. We got that beautiful color that we were looking for. We don't want to get too much darker because then it will be burnt. But we don't want it tran just translucent. We want that gorgeous brown, or golden brown and red and all oh, those lovely colors look at that okay so it says next to add our tomatoes stop that there for the moment so we're going to add our tomatoes and a Another person who has tried this recipe, who under, apparently understands about Indian cooking, saw the same flaw I did, and that is that the tomatoes need a few minutes to cook down, and before you add anything else to them, they will kind of turn into a sauce. 
we don't want to do too much more. I'm going to add my seasonings real quick. Uh, it says add the uh, add this this garam masala. Uh, let's see. Half a teaspoon of paprika, a pinch of ground coriander. So here's the ground coriander. We're going to do a pinch of ground coriander. Well, I don't know what they're considering a pinch, but we're going to drop that back down to medium, medium. True medium. 275 degrees. And there's a pinch as far as I'm concerned. That's a pinch. Alrighty. Uh, ground cumin, a half a teaspoon, ground cumin. I know, I shouldn't be wiping on my clothing, that is such a bad habit, I normally would have an apron on. Okay, half a teaspoon of ground cumin. There we go, half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Yeah. Turn it down, please. One teaspoon of that, which is the garam masala. Uh, half a teaspoon of ground turmeric. There's the ground turmeric. Let's get a half a teaspoon of it down here. Too much, but that's okay. It will be all right. <laughs> Ground turmeric. Uh, a little bit of paprika. Half a teaspoon. There we go. That's a half a teaspoon. Oh, it's so good right now. Oh, and that is getting creamy too. That toma those tomatoes are starting to break down just right. Okay, that's the ground turmeric. Let's, uh, let's see. We got the lemon juice, salt, pepper to taste. Oh, well, who can see did that? Ah, oh, the screen is annoying me. decided it didn't want to work. It wants to give me a hard time now. Okay, fish and brown, paprika, plenty masala, salt, pepper, cumin, sea, onion, all kind of ginger. Chili powder, that's it, chili powder. Where's the chili powder? There it is. We need a teaspoon of the chili powder. about a cup. I'm 
recording you. Mush. Nice, nice. That looks good and yummy. Like yogurt. It is yogurt. Can I lower your voice a little, please, buddy? I'm gonna... Let's do that again. That's The two dots separate the... That is looking very yummy. We can use... Kids like yogurt, so... I'm sure I can use some strawberries and coax them into eating some fresh yogurt. Uh, so just add the... Until well blended, add the chicken pieces and the potato. So here's, that's well blended. Um, let me get you a picture of that. Let's get you an idea of what that looks like as soon as I come out of the camera here. Here we go. That at the moment is very yellow. <laughs> and yummy. Very yummy. You can look if you can see. Just keep your hands out of the way. Don't. And stay out of the way. Okay, so as you can see, it is a very pretty yellow. Um, chicken pieces, it says. There's the chicken pieces. Almost grabbed my pants. Uh, potatoes. No rough edges. So about a third of this can here. There we go. That's about what it calls for. Now what we'll do here is we want to try to keep this so that it lasts as long as possible. to it but that is really good we got our stuff put away we're good to go um, I'm, I'm gonna close it up on the uh, cameras here and we're going to um, um, But everybody, I'll be back here in a little bit when we get ready to do uh, plating and all of that to show you what the finished product looks like. Until then. Okay, so the way we're going to do these plates is uh, traditional. Well, the way the recipe calls for it is, is that you put the rice down, you put the curry on top and then you garnish with a um, you garnish with some cilantro, fresh cilantro. I do have fresh cilantro but it's not really something that my kids are really big on the flavor of so I'm not going to add it to theirs. Maybe when they get a little bit older and start appreciating flavors more. Put that chair back please. Come on guys, let's not do this. It has a crack. Yeah, that's why daddy doesn't want that one being muscular. Ooh. Okay, so I added a couple slices of rye bread. Kids like the bread, so. A bed of rice. Curry and plenty of sauce, uh, vegetables and sauce. This is not a spicy one, so this shouldn't be too difficult on the kids. Um, I 
try very much not to make it spicy. Mm -hmm. Should be good. Does the iPhone 3GS has black it be. behind it? it yes. And it works in the technology mm -hmm. behind me. Oh, I like that on mine. It's just a tiny bit of salt metal and it's nothing special. And paint ripping. When you and it doesn't. It only has one can. Now, everybody, this is how. That is how Indian curry should look. I don't have any non bread. Otherwise, it would be non bread.